Today we're going to discuss some upcoming tech from Intel, AMD, and Nvidia. Amidst the poor stock and availability of parts, partly due to coronavirus, there is another reason why you should wait off and hold off on buying PC parts for another reason, and that's upcoming tech from Intel, AMD, and Nvidia. We'll start with Intel. Intel has had a poor showing of CPUs for a pretty long time, uh, and that really only looks to continue with their new Rocket Lake CPUs, which are set to drop late 2020 or early 2021. And the reason it's not going to be as much of a big difference is because it's still on 14 nanometer, so it's still going to be the same process node, just refined, uh, the same as Skylake. Um, the graphics are going to be a little better, which is going to incorporate Intel's uh, XE graphics. And according to leaked benchmarks, those actually seem to outperform the current Renoir APUs, which are um, the current fourth generation mobile CPUs from AMD. So the graphics do look to be promising, but the CPU performance is still going to be lacking. Rocket Lake will still likely be on LGA 1200, so people who did buy Comet Lake will have the option to upgrade, but it's not going to be worth it because it's still on 14 nanometer. What I'm really looking forward to is actually Intel's next uh, lineup of CPUs, which is Alder Lake, and Alder Lake is going to be on a 10 nanometer process. So it's the first time in six to seven years, depending on when Intel decides to release it, that Intel is moving from a 14 nanometer process node down to a 10 nanometer process node. And this is kind of a huge jump because they haven't done it in a really long time. Um, so I'm excited to see what kind of performance gains that will give. And it is going to be on a new socket, so it is going to be on LGA 1700, so 1700 pins. Um, so it is going to be a slightly bigger. Uh, socket and it might also have DDR5 support so it'll be nice to have kind of the the bridge generation or the gap between uh, moving from DDR4 to making DDR5 mainstream. Alder Lake is set to launch in late 2021 or early 2022 so I am personally very excited to see what that will bring. Intel is also reportedly planning their XE GPUs which are already in Ice Lake laptops and we haven't really gotten a grasp of you know how good their performance is, but the XE GPU or GPUs, likely multiple GPUs for different price ranges, are reported to be released this summer, so we'll see them um, sometime in like July or August, I'd expect. Intel has previously discussed getting back into the GPU space since they haven't made one um, since the very early days of tech, and uh, they're making, thinking about making three models. So the first one is the XE LP, or low profile, low power. There's the XE HP, or high performance, high power, and then the XE HPC, which is meant for data centers and things like that. The graphics will be on a 10 nanometer node, and there really aren't many leaked numbers regarding pricing or many other specs. What I'm hoping for personally is for the XE LP GPU to start around 150 to 200 dollars and that would really be a, a pretty big amd and nvidia killer because right now if you wanted to buy a gpu from 100 to 200 dollars you have the rx 570 rx 580 rx 590 rx 5500 xt 1650 and 1650 super so if you were able to pack the graphical performance in games um of say a 1660 or a 1660 super into the xe lp then you would have basically something that can kind of compete um, with AMD in terms of gaming performance. And then you'd also be able to have, say, the workstation performance of a 1650 Super um, packed into the card. Because where NVIDIA lacks is that they don't have uh, as good gaming performance as AMD can offer for the same price. And then where AMD lacks is that they don't have the workstation performance. So if Intel could really come in and undercut both of them and offer both of these things for even maybe the same price, but a, a, a lower price would be ideal. Um, this could be a really great entry for Intel into the GPU space. For the XE HP, I'm hoping it'll start around $250 to $300 and have the gaming performance of somewhere around a 5700 to a 2060 Super. Now that it is setting the bar pretty high, but I'm hoping for around $300 that they can offer, um, as I said before, great gaming performance, but also good workstation performance at the same or lower prices um, than what's currently offered. So it could be like the same prices as AMD's chips, but they also have the better workstation performance. And in the case of Nvidia, around the similar game performance and maybe a little, little worse or similar workstation, but just for less. And then finally for the XE HPC GPU, it really depends on which way um, Intel wants to market it because they could market it towards the data center and server, or they can market it towards like workstation builds for prosumers who want to do like video editing or rendering or CAD or things like that. Okay, let's talk about AMD now. AMD's B550 boards are set to launch on June 16th, which is three days from now. 
and by the time you guys are watching this it'll probably be already out and it's offered as a low cost alternative to x570 so you can get native support for ryzen 4000 without having to update your bios and not be able to use some of the older cpus b550 will likely include pcie 4.0 on the cpu so that means um you'll be able to use pcie 4.0 gpus which doesn't really mean much because um, PCIe 4.0 GPUs aren't mainstream at all whatsoever. It's going to take at least, I'd say at least three years for it to actually become an actual thing and for GPUs to actually saturate the full bandwidth uh, of PCIe 3.0 because currently I don't think the 2080 Ti even saturates the full um, X16 lanes. Um, so there isn't really a need for the extra bandwidth of PCIe 4.0. Um, there are no PCIe 4.0 lanes on the PCHR chipset, so that does mean that you can't use, well, theoretically, you can't use um, PCIe 4.0 drives, which there aren't really actually many out yet, and none that really seem to provide a significant speed advantage over PCIe 3.0 um, drives. The prices seem to range anywhere from $100 to $200, so instead of buying a higher end B550, you can go for a lower end B450 and then just flash the BIOS because realistically, if you're going to be buying a Ryzen 4000 CPU, you're not going to want to use your older CPU with it. So there's really no point in um, investing in a higher end B550 instead of going for a higher end B450, which can cost maybe about 100 to $120. And you can still get great VRMs and still use the same chips, but just save quite a bit of money. The lower end B550 boards do look promising for those who want to buy a new system but it might be worth it to wait until Ryzen 4000 is launched to see if your motherboard manufacturer is going to release the beta BIOS or select BIOS for your motherboard so that you can potentially update to the Ryzen 4000 BIOS. Zen 3, codenamed Ryzen 4000 and RDNA 2, nicknamed Big Navi, are reported to launch this September uh, at Computex. And Computex has been moved to September 28th to 30th because of all of the human malware situation going on. Zen 3 is a refined seven nanometer process node from TSMC. And from what AMD has said, it looks to be a decent boost in IPC over Zen 2, anywhere in the realms from about 10 to 15%, I'm assuming by them saying it's a decent boost. It likely won't be worth paying the price to upgrade from Ryzen 3000 to 4000, mainly because I just don't think that investing more into a dead platform when you don't really get a whole lot more performance isn't exactly worth it. But if you're like me and you have a first generation or a second generation uh, AMD Ryzen CPU, then it may be worth upgrading because uh, Ryzen 4000 is likely to be the last CPU on AM4. And after that, they're probably going to move to AM5 or whatever the socket they choose. And that's likely going to support DDR5. And DDR5 is probably going to cost a fair bit more when it first launches compared to ddr4 so um it may be a pretty expensive uh upgrade option at first and it may not be worth it for most people to actually upgrade to since it's going to cost so much so that's why you kind of want to invest i guess now into a ddr4 platform when you still can and use your hardware to its max until like maybe in a few years when DDR5 becomes more mainstream. RDNA 2 is AMD's new GPU microarchitecture, nicknamed Big Navi because it's reported to kill NVIDIA's top end GPUs and give them some sort of competition. It'll still be on 7 nanometer, but AMD claims it'll be a pretty big boost over RDNA, which can be found in the 5700, 5700T, and the likes. RDNA 2 is going to appear on the Xbox Series X and the PlayStation 5, and while you can't draw many performance conclusions out of that, the demos on the Xbox Series X, at least from what I've seen, look to be pretty smooth even on the Ultra PC settings. So, um, the fact that it is running pretty well already does kind of give me some hope about Big Navi. Although I think it's great that AMD is pushing back in the gaming space against Nvidia, I really think that they should focus on the workstation space because that's where they really fall behind. As soon as you start to open CAD or video editing or even streaming, if you want to stream your games, then Nvidia kind of becomes the only choice, which is why I said earlier that Intel, if Intel were to come out with a new um, GPU that were good in workstation, then it could be a pretty big AMD and NVIDIA killer. Uh, but I would like to see some things from an AMD because they have a pretty strong GPU showing and I would like to see some more workstation performance out of that. I also hope that the GPU launch will be pretty smooth because as we saw last year, it was a huge fiasco with the 5700 and 5700 XT having numerous GPU issues and a lot of people returned their GPUs in order to get NVIDIA ones instead. But 
I, they are appearing on the Xbox Series X and the PlayStation 5, so that those really can't fail, essentially, or that's just another lost business for AMD. So I really think that AMD will actually have this one nailed on the head this time. Lastly, we'll talk about NVIDIA. NVIDIA's Turing microarchitecture was a huge flop, to say the least, with the 1080 Ti comparable to the 2080 and 2080 Super, and the 2080 Ti just wasn't worth the $1,100 price tag for the small performance uplift. Ray tracing was also a dead marketing term because ray tracing essentially halved your FPS and didn't make the game run as smooth anyways. You could see maybe a few more reflections and it did look nicer overall, but it really took a toll on your FPS and that's why it kind of flopped. However, it seems like Turing was more of a bridge lineup with the Ampere microarchitecture looking to be much more promising in the things that Turing was supposed to deliver. NVIDIA is moving from a TSMC 12 nanometer process to a 7 nanometer one for Ampere and it looks to be much more efficient than what Turing was, or at least I hope it will be. Additionally, NVIDIA claims the ray tracing experience is going to be drastically better than what Turing could offer, and although not many games support ray tracing, it is nice to see that those that do are going to be able to actually have a playable frame rate with RTX on. In my opinion, NVIDIA should be trying to optimize their microarchitecture to improve in the areas where it lacks behind AMD, most notably gaming. And I'd also like to see more performance for a similar price, which would be optimal, or similar performance for a lower price. I would prefer the former just because the current market prices aren't outrageous for, um, for most of their GPUs, but more performance for the same price would definitely be a good way for NVIDIA to reclaim some of the GPU space. Either way, I'm really excited to see what Ampere can offer in the GPU space. The PC market has come out of a period of stagnation and failed products, and now we're beginning to see innovation that we haven't seen in a long, long time. Ultimately, this is all better for the consumer, and pretty much everyone can be happy about that. Alright, that's it for upcoming tech from Intel, AMD, and Nvidia. Thumbs up if you enjoyed, down if you didn't. Let me know in the comments section down below which one you're most excited for. Be sure to subscribe for more tech content. Follow me on Twitter at RealBrandonYen.